Je m'appelle Len Bastien. Je suis le sous-ministre adjoint gestion d'information pour la Défense nationale. What's interesting is we have two corporate roles. Uh, as a chief information officer or CIO, I'm the head of IT for the department. So I make sure that we're doing the right things at the right time in the IMIT space. We also provide to the command uh, structure of the chief of defense staff the joint six function, which means on the military side, we've got to make sure that they have the right IMIT capabilities when they deploy and go out the door for mission or exercises. So it's not a traditional IT job uh, by any means. Uh, our allies look at us as, as, a, as a formidable uh, part of the team when we deploy in, into coalition exercises and mission space. So I'm really quite proud of what the group can do. It's not simple. I mean, we do deliver basic IT services, and we represent the services now covered by Shared uh, Services Canada, but we also play in, in the game of space and communications and, and satellite uh, military communications so we can support the mission and, and success in operations. The IMIT program at National Defense is a decentralized program. What that means is the CIO doesn't necessarily own all the services or assets being delivered nationally. What we do is we depend on and we work closely with our service provider colleagues in the Army, Navy and Air Force to make sure that everyone gets what they need from the IMIT program. There's 100,000 people in national defense and we deliver the enterprise services to all of them. They need these services to make sure they get their pay, their entitlements and that the department can do its business. Um, the challenge of being decentralized is really not that much of a challenge as long as we stay coordinated uh, with our colleagues in these other uh, divisions. And IMIT is, a, is a constantly evolving, and a lot of this stuff is happening in the background. Uh, we've recently moved a lot of assets and people to Shared Services Canada, as, as you know. We've also been working closely with our HR colleagues and some of the efforts by the government to consolidate pay in Miramichi, New Brunswick. Um, what a lot of people don't know is 6,000 of our folks are getting paid out of Miramichi already, and by Christmas, plausibly, the rest of us. And so. We work closely to make sure that these things happen transparently and the users don't feel it and they don't get affected. But it's an awful lot of work in the background that, that, that goes on inside the group. The other big thing we're going to be getting involved in is the Carling Campus move. There's about 8,500 folks in the National Capital Region that will be moving out to Carling Campus in the coming years. This will be the new defense headquarters in Ottawa and it brings a terrific opportunity for us to look at how we uh, are delivering the business, especially in the information management and technology world. Uh, it's a wide open space, lots of light, lots of green uh, space outside to, to appreciate. It really is going to be a good experience. To tie into that, we'd like to make sure the IMIT experience is equally as, as positive. So we're working closely with our colleagues in shared services to make sure we have the right capabilities in the, for the modern day. And, and I'm, I'm really anxious to see uh, the, the look on people's faces as we start to turn things on in campus. Another very important file that we're involved in is the evolution of the, of the cyber environment. Um, Non-traditional environment, it's not land, air, or water, but it is a very real problem at a, on a global scale. National Defense has a responsibility to defend its networks and, and support the mission, uh, but we also are part of the government and the government program to deal with cyber. Uh, we'll be very active in this space. We currently have a considerable amount of assets and, and cyber warriors ready to go. We're going to grow and evolve that in the coming years and, and really we're going to work closely with our the commanders of the environments to make sure we have the right capability in the right place at the right time. Uh, I think cyber will be the next big environment. Um, I think members of the defense team can contribute really in three ways. Uh, be innovative, okay? be proactive and be aware. And here's what I mean. Being innovative is an opportunity, given the Blueprint 2020 efforts by the government, to bring forward good ideas. Um, crowdsourcing has become a way of, of developing and evolving capabilities, not only in, in the internet, but in very much in our world in the government. So anything we can do to reduce red tape and cut administrative overhead, uh, we really should be looking at innovative ways to change the way we do our business. On the proactive side, we want users to be aware of what's available to them. We put a lot of services out there and we make them available, but again, it's up to the users to become informed and trained on how to use those tools. So I would, I would encourage folks to visit our intranet site, look at what capabilities and services are available to them, and take advantage of us. On the awareness front, I think our users are our greatest asset when it comes to protecting our networks. 
Um, as much as we do in the background, I think the users have the ability to help us make sure we don't go and click on the wrong things. So we try to inform them and make them very aware of what the risks are in cyberspace. But it doesn't stop at work. As a CIO and the IT guru for the department, we, we'd like to make sure people also take that information with them home so they can protect themselves in their personal life. Ça donne que le mois d'octobre serait un temps idéal de réviser vos pratiques en cybersécurité chez vous comme au bureau. Our concerns in, in cyberspace, especially related to social media, um, the real life examples can be pretty raw. Um, and I'll avoid maybe getting into the details, but if you can imagine the amount of information that's available on the internet today, that mosaic of data can be pulled together to create otherwise benign, very critical, critical information that can become uh, a threat or a risk to people. So we're very concerned about how people use the internet and, and, and even how they engage in social media. Um, go find a buddy in the department who you're not currently friends with on any of your social media accounts and ask them to Google you. Ask them to look you up in that social media environment and see what they see. Yeah, I think you'd be a little bit uncomfortable with the amount of information most people are letting go without, without checking. It's, it's one thing to let your friends see some of this stuff, but when, what a lot of people don't realize is the public can still see it, and, and that creates an environment where uh, information can be used against us.